there. Very good evening to you. And thank you for staying tuned to Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Arroyo. This is The World Today. Here are our top stories at this hour. Now, Iraq's president has asked the deputy speaker to form a new government. Mr. Abadi was nominated by the prime minister, Shia parties instead of the incumbent Nuri Maliki. But Mr. Maliki has made it clear that he wants to stand for a third term and pro Maliki security forces to key sites in Baghdad overnight. However, the Prime Minister Maliki has made it clear that he will not be intimidated. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has indicated that he will not give in to the pressure to drop his bid for a third term and accuses the president of violating the constitution in a tough televised speech likely to deepen political tensions as a Sunni insurgency rages. Maliki, seen as an authoritarian and sectarian leader, accused Iraq's Kurdish president of violating the constitution by failing to meet a deadline for asking Iraq's biggest political bloc to nominate a prime minister. A dispute over which bloc won the most seats during the election has complicated efforts to form a new government in Iraq, a major oil exporter. Maliki, who has served in a caretaker capacity since an inconclusive election in April, has defied calls by Sunni Kurds, some fellow Shiites, and a regional power broker, Iran, to support a less polarizing figure who can unite Iraqis against Islamic State militants. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry insists that the formation of an Iraqi government for stability and is urging the Prime Minister, Nouri al-Maliki, to political tensions further. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, the uh, government formation process is, is critical in terms of sustaining uh, the stability and calm in Iraq. And our hope is that Mr. Maliki will not stir those waters. One thing all Iraqis need to know, that uh, there will be little international support of any kind whatsoever for anything that deviates from the legitimate constitutional process that is in place and being worked on now. They need to finish that and give a new government uh, an opportunity to be voted on and move forward. U.S. President Barack Obama has urged Iraqi political leaders to turn differences and form a more inclusive government that can unite against Islamic State militants. The United States has consecutive days of airstrike, stepping up assistance to Kurdish forces to counter the advance of Islamist militants in the north of the country. Maliki, who has been premier since 2006, has alienated some allies including the United States, who blame him for failing to forge consensus and fueling sectarian violence that is breaking Iraq apart. Now, the negotiating process is on again as indirect talks between Israeli and Palestinian negotiators aimed at finding a long-term solution to the conflict in Gaza has begun in Cairo. The fresh discussions come amid a new three-day ceasefire agreed between Israel and the Islamist group Hamas. The truce is holding so far with people returning to normal work activities for now. And about 2,000 people have died since the fighting in Gaza began on July the 8th. Those killed include more than 1,900 Palestinians and most of them were civilians. Without surprise, Palestinians were quick to accept a 72-hour ceasefire deal in Gaza, which began last night, with talks continuing in Cairo. Hours before the ceasefire began, rockets can be seen firing across the Karem Shalom crossing into Gaza. The crossing serves as a transfer point for cargo into Gaza, including food and medical supplies. Egypt's foreign ministry issued a statement urging both sides to take advantage of the truce in order to resume negotiations. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has warned that Israel will not negotiate if it comes under fire from Gaza. Many people, including Israelis, are very skeptical about the new ceasefire deal as they doubt it will last. You know, I don't know. The, the one before that was 72 hours and exactly 8 a.m. it started again. So I don't know what they'll do this time. Maybe. Uh, Tzahal, uh, maybe the IDF hit them in a certain place and they have to regroup. Maybe they're serious. We don't know. We have to wait till the 72 hours are up. 
but you never know. It just uh, and even then, you know, a week later, a month later, the rockets can start being firing again. So you, you never know. I think until people start talking and stop being violent, they won't do anything. But hopefully, it'll work. I don't know. It's a hard situation. To finish Gaza, that's it. It's enough. We have too much problem with him. What you can do? Until when? It's already many, many, many years. It's like that. I think it's about time to take him out. Go inside, and that's it. Hamas has demanded an end to Israeli and Egyptian blockades of the coastal territory and the opening of a Gaza seaport, a project Israel says should be dealt with only in any future talks on a permanent peace deal with the Palestinians. Israel stands ready to defend its people if Gaza makes any slight move to violate the ceasefire. Israel has repeatedly demonstrated our desire to put an end to the current violence. Uh, we have accepted and honored nine separate ceasefires, ceasefires that Hamas either rejected or violated. And if Hamas violates the current ceasefire too, we will of course be ready to act to protect our people from Hamas terror attacks. A month of war has killed 1,910 Palestinians and 67 Israelis while devastating wild tracts of densely populated Gaza. The violence of the past three days had also been less intense than at the outset of the conflict, with reduced firing on both sides. For more on that, I'm now being joined live from Washington by the voice of America's Scott Stearns. Hello, Scott. Thank you so much for joining us again on The World Today. Now, any idea on the progress that's been made so far concerning the indirect talks going on in Cairo? These talks in Cairo uh, continue to struggle over the issues that you heard in that last package. Where can, how can uh, both Hamas and the Israelis claim to have gained something uh, from the conflict that's gone on now for a month. Hamas is looking for a lifting of the blockade and a seaport. Uh, that's something that they say they can deliver, show to their people that this has all been worth it. And Israel sees those issues as negotiating under the gun and that those are, are broader issues to be decided uh, in talks toward a two-state solution, chaired primarily by the Palestinian Authority, led by Mahmoud Abbas. That's a far different uh, situation than dealing directly with Hamas. Of course, Israel doesn't deal uh, directly with Hamas and is going through Egypt as the intermediary in Cairo. So that, as well, is, is part of the issue. So what exactly is it that both sides want in order to achieve a permanent ceasefire? And are those terms realistic? Israel believes that its terms are realistic in that it will accept only permanent guarantees for its security. Part of that is dealing with the rockets. The bigger part, U.S. officials say, is dealing with these tunnels, which are far more numerous than the Israeli military initially thought. So the feeling here in Washington is that there will be no long-term Israeli agreement uh, to stop uh, the violence until all of these tunnels are dealt with. Uh, from Hamas's standpoint, as we say, they want deliverables to show the people in Gaza that this struggle has been worth it, either uh, the lifting of the Israeli-Egyptian blockade or uh, movement, some sort of tangible progress toward the opening of a seaport. Now, that would be a concern both to the Israelis and to the Egyptians, that it would be an opportunity for Hamas to rearm. Hamas might have to settle for a bigger uh, package of promises of uh, financial assistance from both the United States and the European Union to rebuild damage in Gaza, uh, to restore it somewhat back to the status quo, but to not advance beyond that, namely, the lifting of the blockade and having a seaport. Now, finally, just before I let you go, Scott, you know, the Hamas spokesman has warned that this could be the last chance to find a long-term solution to the conflict. Do you agree? This can't go on from Hamas's standpoint forever because they will, with the blockade, will ultimately run out of rockets. 
it's only the last uh, opportunity if Hamas patrons, uh, largely Gutter and Turkey, agree that it is uh, the feeling uh, from the U.S. side here in negotiating, in talking with the Turks and the Gutteries, is that uh, this process uh, will continue and that Hamas doesn't have the wherewithal simply to walk away from these talks in Cairo. Well, thank you very much, Scott. I've been speaking to the voice of America, Scott Stearns, live from Washington, and he's been telling us more about the ongoing indirect talks between Israel and...